What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon VGC video. Uh, you might notice the orientation of my camera is a little bit different and my lighting is garbage, that's just because I don't have a ring light anymore, please recommend one in the comments. But today, uh, I thought it'd be fun if uh, I would just do a video, like on Mondays I'm, I'm planning to do like a discussion video every week, whether it be like tournament results or anything of that sort. Uh, but today I thought uh, we would, you know, start off this trend. Uh, by ranking the generational gimmicks, uh, I made this whole template by myself, um, so if you want to check it out and submit your own uh, tier list rankings for generational gimmicks, go ahead. You know, it's going to be a link in the description and you can send it to me on like Twitter or something. But uh, beyond that, uh, I just thought that this would be a good discussion considering we're wrapping up Generation 8 uh, and a lot of people don't have a very positive opinion on Dynamax, so I think it'd be a fun way to uh, get the community talking about generational gimmicks. So yeah, if you guys enjoy this the gameplay and time, do me a favor leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily VGC content. And let's go ahead and get into it. So let's start off by explaining what a generational gimmick is. Uh, generational gimmicks are basically mechanics introduced to uh, the new generations of Pokemon pretty much starting from generation 6 and moving forward. However, it could be argued that the gems from Gen 5, being that they were only in one generation, like the normal gem is in every single game, uh, and all of the gems I believe are coded into every game. However, they've been un unobtainable since Gen 5, and that could be for the purpose of that they were basically a gimmick and they were repurposed as like Z-moves uh, and possibly in the next game we have something similar, I don't know. Anyways, uh, that's what a gimmick is. So Z-moves, Dynamax, uh, Mega Evolutions, and nothing pretty much, and, and gems, I, in, I included gems. So we're gonna be ranking those and I'll be talking through uh, why I think they're in the places that they are. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I'll be going in order as to like how they got introduced to the game. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with nothing, AKA there's there's no like a generational gimmick. There's nothing that is introduced only for one gen and then it's gone. I'm gonna go ahead and put that as S uh, and there's, there's very good reason for that. I think that the majority of the Pokemon community would agree that as fun as Megas are, as, as cool as Z-moves, gems, Gigantamax if you're a weirdo, as cool as they are, I think that pure Pokemon, as far as VGC balance goes, because this is a VGC video, uh, obviously we're talking about competitive here, as far as competitive goes, pure Pokemon is always going to be what we prefer. It is the basis of the game that we play, uh, and generational gimmicks kind of just muddy the, they muddy the waters as to like, if it's, a, if, if it's like bad or not. I don't know how to explain it. So like, when we're playing any generation, whether there's a gimmick or not, we play the game effectively the same, with some exceptions in like Gen 8. Um, the game is effectively the same regardless of what gimmick is introduced, so I think the vanilla base game is always going to be the best option, because there's no chance of us being like, this sucks, I hate this, uh, it changes the way that the game plays entirely, because it's just non-existent. So the pure game, I'm going to go ahead and just put as S, I think nothing is best, personally. Next up is uh, the gems. Now, the gems, I am actually kind of iffy on. I did play a little bit of VGC in Generation 5, but I really got my feet on the ground in Gen 6. So, while I have played a couple of matches on, like, Showdown uh, with, like, the gems and stuff, uh, I'm not super familiar with them, so please forgive my ranking if you completely disagree and you're, like, a Gen 5 old head in the community. I personally think that these are a solid B. Why? Z moves took this concept to the extreme, but gems themselves aren't like terribly exciting and they don't really break the game. So basically once per game, uh, you get in, you get a gem, right? You equip it and it's a consumable item uh, and it'll boost the power of your move by 50%. So you can imagine it as like a one, uh, a one time choice specs, a one time choice band, whichever category it falls into, the power gets increased by 50%. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I like the fact that these gems can be knocked off. Uh, I like the fact that these gems don't break through protect. And honestly, if that's like the, that, that's like the whole thing. It's a one-time thing. Z moves are very reminiscent of it. Um, however, they, they work in very different ways when you get into like the nitty gritty of it. I like the fact that gems activate before 
uh, they th like they're consumed before the attack happens. So you're able to do things like um, what's it called? Flying gem acrobatics uh, tornadus because you you know acrobatics has 55 base power if I remember, uh, and you get the gem boost and you consume the gem and then your acrobatics is immediately going to be 110 base power plus the gem boost. So it's 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 cool like that, right? Uh, also, you could use it for like wall breaking stuff. So you would have certain things like oh. You know, my Garchomp's Draco Meteor. I'm just using Garchomp as an example. Probably Hydreigon was a more common user of, like, Dragon Gem. I don't know. I didn't play the format that much. Uh, but, like, you would be able to be like, oh, uh, I am not able to one-shot this thing with a Draco Meteor. But if I use this Dragon Gem and I can, like, hold off on using a Draco Meteor until I encounter, I don't know, like, a special defensive Rotom, I'm going to be able to get that one-shot. And that's going to be really, really big for my game plan. I like the fact that it is, like, not... It's not like a Z-move in the fact that like a Z-move you can activate at any point in time. It's that when you use a move of this type, your gem will activate. So you have to play in such a way where it's like, I can't use a dragon move without fear of wasting this important resource that could win me the game later on. So I like that. I think gems are a very balanced way of using a, a generational gimmick. Even if it wasn't a gimmick, kind of is. I think that B tier is like a solid place for them. They don't change the game too much. They don't break anything. And they're just, they're very fun in my opinion, you know? Next up, we have, also I just wrote this out of order, Megas. Now, Megas, I'm gonna go ahead and put, it, it's it's weird, cause like, Gen 6 is the gen that I really, really got into VGC. However, it's, I also understand like the arguments against Mega Evolutions. This is gonna be a little bit of a hot take. I think it, I think it deserves to be in B tier next to gems. Uh, because while Megas did change how the game played entirely, it it didn't change a lot of the fundamentals, if that makes sense. Like, the main argument I would have against Megas is the fact that Megas will basically become a mandatory thing on your team, which is true of every single gimmick we see from this point forward. Um, a Mega Pokemon is something that you have to build your team around as the difference. I enjoyed the way that that played because we saw things like, oh, I'm going to be using a Mega Kangaskhan team, so I'm going to build my team to support that. Mega Kangaskhan is my Mega. I want to build a Mega Manectric team with like Tapu Fini, with uh, Tapu Bulu, uh, with, you know, Raindance Mega Main, with Snarl. Like you would basically be like, you choose your Mega and then you build, which a lot of gimmicks going forward don't exactly do that. Gigantamax and Dynamax kind of do that, but uh, Mega Evolution was definitely the most team constraining building that you had to do as far as like gimmicks go. So I do think that in Gen 6, Megas were a bit overpowered. Uh, I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't like um, Mega Kangaskhan too much. Granted, it was like my first series VGC uh, of, was a VGC format. So I was I was more prone to complaining about things being unbalanced. Uh, however, they did, you know, tune them in Gen 7 to be a lot more balanced. Uh, I, I also think that like Megas were a gimmick that while this is like a VGC ranking, also like it's it's one of the gimmicks that the singles players enjoyed just about as much as we did. Uh, but yeah, uh, not being able to knock off a Mega Stone, I think made sense for the gimmick as a whole. Uh, I, I like the fact that it's basically just like you power up one Pokemon. And beyond that, once the Mega has been revealed, the game plays entirely the same. That's that's it. Basically, like the game once the mega exists is the same game that we've been playing since generation one you know to an extent you get what i mean uh, the fundamentals are still there uh where the main difference is in team building megas changed how you team build they didn't change how you play the game which i like so yeah uh also there was a lot more experimentation people were willing to do with megas because a lot of people had favorite pokemon that were megas uh, like there was an Ice Beam Mega Absol, if I remember, because it was like, hey, I really like Absol, even though it's like Dudu Kaka in this format, uh, I can, it now has 115 base special attack and it outspeeds Lando. So why not run like a mix set with Ice Beam? That was cool. The fact that the Mega Stone also prevented you from running an item unless you were a Mega Rayquaza is also a very balancing thing for it. It's not that you can run like a choice, a choice banded Mega Beedrill. It's that you're running a Mega Beedrill, you don't have an item, you got to deal with it. The, the Mega is the item. I like that. I think that that is a fine way to balance it. That's why it's about on par with, with gems, in my opinion. Next up is Z-Moves. Uh, that's going to be a solid C or D tier for me. It's going to be either high D or like low C, um, but not high C. It has way too much sugar. But yeah, uh, so 
Z moves are interesting. So Z moves are a lot like gems, but over tuned to a point where it it sort of dipped into like the team building constraint, but not much because you still play the game the exact same, but there's like a nuke move somewhere out there and it was weird. At one point there was a bug in the game where if you wide guarded, then we thought it was like a patch made in Ultra Sun Ultra Move. We thought it was like a, a change made to the game to balance Z moves, but if you wide guarded on a Z move for the first couple of months of Ultra Sun Ultra Moon, it would have the damage or it would cut the damage uh, like you were protecting your partner Pokemon, even if you, like they weren't protecting. So it was basically like a, an anti Z move tech. But as it turns out, that was a bug. And then they removed it and then Z moves were the same. I like how certain Z moves had like very special effects. I think it was cool that um, was it Lycanroc Z move had a built in defog? Well, not defog, but built in terrain remover because in this gen defog didn't remove terrains. Uh, I liked that. Kamoa had a very special Z move in Ultra Sun Ultra Moon that didn't have in Sun and Moon that made it viable for once because it was an Omni Boost. Uh, Eevee getting a double Omni Boost was very cool. Beyond that, uh, they were basically just gems. Uh, however, there was also some like weird stuff that you could do. Z Celebrate would be an Omni Boost. Like certain moves gained competitive viability. Splash you could use as basically like a physical tail glow if you made it into Z Splash. Uh, there was a lot of tech that you could do with it. I didn't like the fact that you had to, I don't know, in, in best of one, it could be a little bit annoying because it was like, oh, there's a Heatran, I'm a Swampert, I should beat it, oh, they're, they're Bloom Doom, right? I didn't like that, but you got used to it after a while, and I'm putting it at C because I didn't find it terribly fun, but it didn't ruin my experience. It's very middle of the road, you know? Um, Basically, I guess if, if B, if it's if it's like B or higher, it's like I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was, but I don't think it was the best um, unless it's S, in which case it is the best. If it's C, it's like fine. I can live with it. So, yeah, uh, I, I also did like that. There were some like really cool combos that you could do, like uh, since Megas were in the game during this time, you could use Mega Manectric uh, with Rain Dance into uh, Hydro Vortex Tapu Fini, which is very cool. These things not being able to get knocked off were a little bit annoying, and the fact that they do break through Protect is kind of... Uh, I, don't, I don't like it. I think Protect should remain sacred, unless you're like Urshifu, in which case I think we need to, you know, fix that, but... Um, unless you like use like Faint or some other Protect breaking move like Phantom Force, I think Protect is a sacred move, you know? Don't ruin Protect. It is a tool that is very important. Z moves bypassing that. I get why they did it. It was like, hey, you know, you have this special gimmick, if you mess up and target into a protect, you you don't want to punish them that much. You want them to at least get some kind of reward. But I don't know. I like that Focus Sash like would hypothetically be like, oh, hey, I live the Z move. But now it's like, yeah, you lose a Focus Sash if you protect on. I don't know. I didn't like it. But beyond that, Z moves were fine. I think they were an OK addition. Um, and you guys have all heard me talk about Dynamax before. So I'm going to try to restrain myself uh, as I give it the lowest rating. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna talk about Dynamax, okay? So bear with me if you've heard this speech before, but I'll go through my issues with it. My whole basis for the rankings here was that gimmicks, as long as they don't fundamentally change the way the game is played, are fine. Dynamax, I think, is the only offender of that, the only true offender. Um, it made hyper offense way too good, because while we did originally think that, like, hey, I can Dynamax and that will double my Ferrothorn's HP and allow me to live a hit and then I'm going to use a defensive Dynamax because I'm only going to Steel Spike. We found out that that was just like a waste of a Dynamax <laughs> pretty early in the format um, and that the best way to use Dynamax was stuff like Weakness Policy, Colossal into Max um, Vocalith, uh, Scope Lens, Togekiss so you could avoid Snarl, lowering your special attack stat and then you're critting everything and also increasing your speed. Uh, and yeah, there was, I don't know. So Dynamax is bad in the way that it was too good of a mechanic that counterplay to it was very limited. I, I, I found I found it weird that the only way to make a Dynamax get forced out was like these weird niche situations where like if you're facing a G-Max Hatterene with Magic Bounce and you parting shot it, the Hatterene gets switched out because it reflected your parting shot or you trick a... You, twick, you, you trick or switch your Rue and eject button onto the Pokemon and hit it with a priority move, that switches them out. Uh, but Roar doesn't work, uh, but Dragon Tail wouldn't work. You couldn't use weight-based moves for some reason, so all of a sudden Heavy Slam, Low Kick, all these like moves just became irrelevant. I There was a lot of weird stuff with Dynamax. 
Um, the fact that the game played fundamentally different when Dynamax was around was also pretty bad because it seems that the way that you play the game is very matchup fishy because your teams revolve around a Dynamax Pokemon in many situations. It's like, I think a prime example of this would be like Series 7, uh, where it was basically like, I built a team where I had like a Metagross and a Mimikyu, and I had a Politoed and a Kingdra. And my two modes were, I if I'm facing a team that Metagross does well, I weakness policy, shadow sneak my Metagross, and hit him three times, and I'm probably going to get three knockouts because I can't be intimidated. Uh, or if I face a team where, you know, Kingdra does well, I life orb, max geyser in the rain, swift swim, boost through their entire team, and that's about it. It seems like Dynamax made it roll or get rolled, and that did increase the use of like defensive cores uh, and the need to make your Pokemon as bulky as possible. But it almost feels that despite that being like our immediate reaction to it, that hyper offense still prevailed through every single format, except for the one where Dynamax didn't exist. Series 10, the one format where we didn't have Dynamax, the game felt entirely different. Uh, it, it was like, it was crazy. You were seeing Rocky Helmet special attacking Lander Asterion. So that way you don't immediately lose to Urshifu. So that way you don't immediately lose to Zacian. While there were hyper offensive Pokemon in the game, like Urshifu, Zacian, and, um, and Regieleki, the fact that Dynamax went away was enough for the game and like the, the people playing the game to almost balance it out by playing so defensively. And I really liked that. Because Dynamax makes it feels like it makes it feel like if you make one mistake, you just get rolled and you lose. And in best of three, that's fine, right? But in like best of one, where most people play, it can feel very discouraging sometimes. I think that while Pokemon is a game that at the highest level you shouldn't be able to make a mistake and not expect to lose, this made it so it was like if you make a mistake even at the lowest level, you can lose to someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And that was very weird. I, I, I get why Dynamax some people like. I like the flashiness of it. I like how big they get. Um, but I don't know. I personally think that a gimmick where you double your HP, all of your moves have a guaranteed secondary effect on top of being well over 100 base power, uh, either increasing your stats, lowering your opponent's stats, or setting some kind of strange field effect while also making it so you can't be forcibly switched out by switching moves uh, and you're immune to normally very viable moves such as weight-based moves uh, or other strange niche options like Instruct not being able to use on your Pokemon. I find that to be a little bit overtuned uh, and a bit busted, which is why it's at F. So yeah, uh, I just thought I would say that as calmly as possible because uh, I want to scream when I play Dynamax. <laughs> and that isn't to say that I'm bad at Dynamax, I, I I think this might be one of my better formats that I play. Um, yeah, it's not that I can't beat it because like I, you see me, you see me play on stream, you see me like play the game, uh, you've seen that I'm able to reach like top 500, top 200 at times even. I just don't think it's good. I just don't think it's good, you know. So yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I know that this one I wasn't as energetic. I'm a little bit tired today, uh, but I thought I would give my thoughts. And of course, if you want to rank these gimmicks, they're gonna be. You know, this this list will be linked in the comment section or not in the comment section in the description down below for you guys to use. Send it to me on Twitter. Let me know. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Have a nice one. Bye.